a supermodel, an excellent, excellent emulator. But, and I'm going to assume this is the reason you're here, it is an absolute pain in the ass to get everything set up. Supermodel is actually really versatile. You can use it with force feedback steering wheels, LAN play, and I'm pretty sure you could even integrate it back into original hardware. But because of this versatility, it doesn't actually come pre-set up with any use case in mind. It's down to you, the end user, to get everything set up for your specific use case. But let's face it, most of us are going to be using a PC, a controller, and a mouse. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Anyone that's familiar with Supermodel can tell you that the laundry list to get everything up and running is pretty long. Whether that be getting these games fixed in their test menus, setting controls, audio adjustments, there's actually quite a lot to cover. But that's where I come in. By simply providing configuration files, you will have absolute minimum setup to do yourself. And yes, all controls here have been pre-configured. I think everyone just wants to play some games, so let's just get right into it. So, bring yourself over to this LaunchBox forum page here. The link will be in the description below. And as you can see, I've given a brief overview of what I've pre-configured. And if we go towards the bottom of this page, I've given a full breakdown of exactly what I've done on a per game basis. So essentially, this is the laundry list I was referring to earlier on. A significant amount of time has been put into this project to make sure everything is all set up and tested. So just to quickly go over what this pre-configuration gives you, as you can see here, every single game working fine with no errors. You also get two player mouse support for the light gun games. I've configured the audio on a per game basis. Every game that needed a test menu adjustment to be able to work has had it done. I've calibrated every single analog control. Some games benefit from different modes being activated. For example, Sega Rally 2, if you set it to special, it enables three laps per stage rather than just the one. All games have been set to free play and any Japanese games now display in English. And as you can see here, and this is the big one, all controls have been pre-configured. Not only have I pre-configured them, I've also provided images for your pause menus for your front ends or just for reference. Keep in mind, if you do change your controls around, these images are then going to be incorrect. Anyway, enough of the pre-ramble, let's get everything set up. So just scroll down to the instructions here, and I'm going to be taking you through these step by step. So we're going to grab our emulator and the UI from this website here. So you want to bring yourself down to this search function here, and we're going to search for supermodel git. Make sure you search for both of those words. And with these results, they're not going to be in chronological order. And with this website, there is no way to filter into chronological order. So just double check the dates here just to make sure that you're getting the most recent one. So with this website, I think it's a European website. So the dating format is year, obviously, month, and then day. That's caught me out a couple of times, which is why I've mentioned it. So just find the most recent one, click on it and then download it from this link here. So we want to bring ourselves back down to the search function and we want to search for Sega Model 3 UI. We don't want to search for Supermodel UI as they're two different things. So again, with these search results, they're not going to be in chronological order. And this is the most recent one as it hasn't had an update in a little while. So just click on it and then select which link you want to download it from. Once you've got both of those downloaded, unzip them to your preferred location. I'm just using my desktop just so I can demo. Once they're unzipped, we actually now need to move some files from the UI folder into this supermodel folder. So you can copy and paste it, move it across, whatever you need to do. But we need to transfer the include folder, the snaps folder, and the UI exe, and we need to put them into the supermodel file system. Make sure you only transfer those three files. All of the other files contained within the UI folder are meant for older versions of Supermodel, so don't touch them. Now we want to bring ourselves back to the LaunchBox forum page as we want to download the pre-configuration files. Now you will need an account and be logged in to be able to download this, but once you've done that, the download link should appear. So just click on that and we want to download just for now, the NVRAM folder. 
unzip this. And then place it in the supermodel file system, replacing the one that's already there. Now let's jump back to the LaunchBox forum page. And now we want to download the any file for our specific input type. Now, if you don't know what input type your controller is, you can just give it a quick Google search and it should tell you. And if that doesn't bring up any results, then you can use this link here to find out what your input type is. If you have the choice between controllers, I strongly recommend that you use an X input controller. If you are using a D input controller, unfortunately here comes a disclaimer. I've made the D input pre-configuration with a PlayStation 4 controller. However, when I used my 8-bit DO controller with it, I found that my inputs were actually incorrect. This is because their input IDs are actually different. So if you're using a D input controller that isn't a PS4 controller and you're finding that your inputs are not lining up, then you will need to use the remapping tool. If you're on X input, you don't have to worry about this at all as input IDs are identical between controllers. So just download the correct file for your input type. And we don't actually need to unzip this one because the file's so small. So just double click on it to open it up. And we want to move the supermodel any file into the config folder, replacing the any file that's already there. Before we point supermodel to where our ROMs are located, I do actually need to cover the subject very quickly. Now, thanks to recent updates to supermodel, we can now use recent main ROMs, 0.236 or newer. You must use split or non-merged ROMs with supermodel. If you use merged ROMs, you're going to get some strange behavior and it will just launch whatever version it wants. This is the set that this pre-configuration is for. You must use these ROMs. Now I've used parent ROMs wherever possible and I've only used a couple of clones as Virtual Fighter 3 Team Battle and Scud Race Plus I consider to be separate games. Now with Sega Bass Fishing, Bass DX is only here because it's the parent for Git Bass UR, which is the upright version of that game. Now you want to play the upright version for two reasons. Firstly, it doesn't break. And secondly, it doesn't have a line tension input. So the controls are more akin to the Dreamcast port, which is perfect for use with a controller. So even though we've got Bass DX and Git Bass UR, we're only playing Git Bass UR. If you're using non-merged ROMs, you don't need to get the Bass DX ROM. Now that we have all of our ROMs sorted out, we can start up the UI and we can point Supermodel to where our ROMs are located with the folder button in the bottom left hand corner. So just press that. Then we're going to select where our ROMs are located, wherever you've put them. And then we're going to press OK. To be able to get the Lost World set up for two players correctly, we actually need to make a small adjustment in the game's XML. So we need to open that up with your favorite text editor. I recommend the one that I'm using here. And then we want to scroll down to the correct entry. There we go, Lost WSGA. Now we can see the entry here that says analog gun one. We actually just want to delete the analog and the underscore. So it just says gun one. So I'm just going to do that for the first player and the second player. And then we're going to give it a save. This is the only option that I would ever change in the games XML. I've seen some tutorials that tell you to change some bits and bobs around in here, but I would strongly recommend against doing that. So just close that down, go back to the UI, and that is everything. You can now play some games. Oh, there is one more thing actually. If you have a different resolution screen, you can change your resolution here. There are a couple of things to note. With Star Wars Trilogy Arcade and its lightsaber battles, which are its bonus stages, it actually inverts the Y axis. So this actually hurts my head and I can't do it. However, I've compensated for it with the controller inputs. So for all of the shooting sections, use the mouse. And then for the lightsaber battles, use the controller and the left stick as I've compensated for that by inverting them. So it's all correct in game. 
if you're struggling with the two player mouse support, just follow these instructions here and you should be good. Also, please feel free to check over the documentation on this page if you're interested or you just want to check what I've done. Now, in the table towards the bottom of the page, I've included for each game any cheat codes or important information. So things like the cheat code to unlock the Hornet in Daytona USA that was only discovered recently and also being able to unlock the Delta and Celica cars in Sega Rally 2. So give that a good read through and make sure that you're not missing out on anything. If you're using a lower end machine and you notice some frame drops, I recommend dropping the resolution to 1280 by 720. And if you're using a D-input controller and your controls don't line up, then you can use this remapping tool here. All of these settings have been set for a reason. So unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend going around and changing any of them. However, I do recommend that you at least try widescreen and wide background. Enable both of these at the same time. And this is essentially the widescreen hack. It works really, really well with this emulator. All of the footage that you've seen in today's video has been captured with both of these enabled. So there we go. That's everything that we need to do to get everything pre-configured and working. A lot of people think that this emulator is broken or too much hard work. And that's really been my mission with this project to make it as easy as possible to set up so everybody can appreciate just how good Supermodel is. Anyway, hopefully I've managed to make things easy for you and save you some time. And if I have, a like and a subscribe goes a long way. And if you want to donate something off the back of this content, don't give it to me, give it to the Supermodel guys. All I do is just use their hard work. Now go play some games and I'll catch you next time.